welcome back to the Sewing Room of Garner. My name is Sandra and I'm going to be walking you through today's DIY tutorial. So on today's um, sewing tutorial, we're going to be following the See and Sew Very Easy pattern. Um, and it's pattern B6404. And this is for boys and this is meant for um, knit fabric. So it's meant for a stretchy fabric and I'll show you um, what you're going to look for for that in here in just a minute. So you'll need your pattern. You're going to need your fabric. Um, this one asks for a contrasting fabric, so I got this really cool truck fabric right here. It's truck fabric. And then a gray, just as my contrast. I got a lot of this when it was on sale, so I, I literally got like 10 yards of it um, so because I was going to use it as my contrast for a lot of different fabrics for these pajamas. And then the pattern also calls for um, one inch elastic, non-roll elastic is fine. Um, so I got the one inch elastic, you're gonna need that as well. You're gonna need some safety pins, some safety pins, hello. <laughs> you are need safety pins, you do need those. You need some um, Pin. pins. You're going to need your pattern. You are gonna need safety pins. I do suggest using two. One for threading it through and then one for holding it so it doesn't slip. And you'll see what I mean by that in here in just a minute. Um, you need a pair of scissors, and you need a seam ripper just in case you need to rip anything out. And if you don't have a overlocker or a serger, I do recommend using this overcast foot. And this overcast foot is very similar to the actual serger, but um, you don't have to have it with, you don't have to actually use it. So you can use this. And because this is a um, a knit fabric you don't necessarily need to finish the edges but sometimes people like to do it just to make it look a little bit more finished okay so now we're going to go ahead and get started I'm going to tell you what kind of materials you're going to need when you're looking at the store <clears throat> so when you're at the um, fabric store you're going to want to get something that has a stretch to it so you're going to want a knit okay on the back of your pattern it gives has these arrows so what it's telling you is if you hold the fabric from this point to this point, you, it wants you to be able to make, to stretch it from this arrow to this next arrow. It's telling you, you want to hold it there, okay? You're going to hold it there, and as long as it could stretch to that second arrow, this is a good fabric, okay? So I think this is like doodle bug or something like that, um, jigga bug, I forgot what the name of it is, but it's one of those... Um, doodle bug I think it is um, it's a new brand that um, Joanne's is carrying that's a knit fabric for kids that has like really fun prints on it I can't find as many of the fun prints in the boy fabrics but I do see a lot of them for the girls so if you have little girls this is perfect for you um, I have a little boy and I have an older girl um, and I'm sure you've seen some of the tutorials that I've made for her projects as well so what you're going to want to do is, in your pattern, you're going to take out your pattern pieces and you're going to cut out all your, pa your pattern pieces that you need. So for view A, it's a short sleeve um, jammy top. And that one you're going to need pieces one, two, and one, two, three, and five. Okay? So you're going to need pieces number one, two, three, which is the sleeve, and five, which is the collar. Okay, so those are the pieces you're going to need for, the, for your top, which is view A. Now, if you're wanting to make a long sleeve, then instead of piece number three, you are going to need piece number four. Okay, we are using pieces number one, two, three, and five today. Now, for the pajama bottoms, which is view C, we need patterns piece number six and number seven. I'm going to be referencing these pieces um, as, as well as I can as we go through this um, sewing tutorial. Okay. Now, you can make the contrast any way you want to. You can make pieces one and two, which is the front and the back, be a solid and have the sleeves be a contrast, or you could do the opposite where you have the pattern be the front and back pieces and your sleeves be the contrast and your collar. I chose to have the sleeves be the contrast um, and the collar be the contrast, and my main front and back piece be the gray, okay? So here are my pattern pieces. So. Okay, so this is one piece, 
and this is another piece and it's on the fold so you only have to cut out one on the fold the one with the notches towards like this is the front piece because it only has one notch on each side and the one with the two notches on the sides is my back piece so i have a back piece and a front piece in gray i have my collar in gray as well and then i have my sleeves which is pattern piece number um three pattern piece number three on the print as my trucks okay and then we have our pajama bottoms so we need two pieces for the front which is pattern piece number six and two pieces for the back which is pattern piece number seven okay if you don't know how to cut this out um, on your fabric then I'm going to put a link below to one of my previous videos that shows you how to lay out your pattern pieces and trace them um, so you can keep your pattern intact in one piece so you're not having to cut your pattern and then having to we use it for different sizes because I made this size six a couple of months ago for my son he's now a size seven so that worked out really well so we're really able to just use that same pattern and move it on up to the next size okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to follow the directions let me see here I think a is gonna be our first one <clears throat> I literally want to go through with this on all the, top of the pieces for you. But it's so easy. It's so easy. It's just front and back. That's all it is. The cutting directions and everything are in one and two pages, front and back. So you, you, that's going to be so easy. Okay. So for our top, we're going to need piece number one and piece number two. So I'm going to put my pant pieces to the side. I'm going to put my sleeve pieces to the side. And I'm going to put my collar to the side. So it says get piece number two and number one, piece number one and number two, match up the side notches, pin, and then sew. Okay? It tells you to do a double sew if you haven't, um, if you don't have a serger. This do, do it says a double stitch on the seam. Now it's, you're going to do pretty sides touching. Because my knit fabric, is this solid gray there is no right or wrong side so as long as I match up my notches to the correct side then I'm good so right here I have two notches right here I have two notches and I'm lining these two notches up okay matching that up and I'm pinning okay I pin at my notch I pin at my front my top of my seam and then again at the bottom okay so i'm putting together piece number one which is the front and piece number two which is the back and that's how it looks okay now i'm going to do the same thing with the other side so again match up notches after you've done your notches then you do your top and then bottom of your seams okay I am using a matching thread today um, because my son is very crazy about that. Even when I'm doing tutorials, I explain to him. He's like, no, it's not matching. I have to match it. So I'm hoping you guys can see it <laughs> when it gets done. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. That's the seam right there. Okay, I'm going to put another pin just right there just because it's kind of stretchy. This knit fabric kind of likes to move on you. It's a little stretchy, so you just kind of keep it down and push it together okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and sew from top to bottom from the sleeve top to the waist okay a double C now in the directions it says it's a 5 eighths of an inch um, let's see here it says 5 eighths unless otherwise specified it should be 5 eighths double stitch Stitch seam along seam, stitch again a quarter of an inch away from there. Okay, so do the first one at five eighths and then do another one at a quarter of an inch beside the five eighths. Okay, so I'll turn on my machine. Turn over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm moving my needle to the middle position and then I'm moving my stitch length to a number three. I'm making sure I'm doing a straight stitch. Okay. at the beginning and the end of all of your seams. Don't 
Don't run over your pins. Stop and take them out as you go. Okay. There's that first seam. I'm going to go through it again a quarter of an inch away. So for me, that's the side of my presser foot and my needle moved all the way over to the left. So it just depends on your machine on how you know you've set it up to see. Some people get a little bit, okay, so what happened here is if I got a little too close to the edge, to the very, very tip of it, if I start sewing too close to the edge, what happens is that that knit fabric goes, gets dug in and there. So there's our double seam, okay, our double stitch. Yep, double stitch, okay. Turn it over and do it again on the opposite side. So move my needle back to the middle position. My fabric is lined up on my 5 eighths line, and you go again. What is it doing? It's getting caught. Yep, it does that. Okay. Make sure it's only two pieces okay want to make sure it kind of got caught again towards the beginning i keep forgetting i'm working with the knit i'm not used to working with knits as, as frequently and when i do i usually just whip out the serger but i wanted just to show you guys how to do it on the regular sewing machine because it's it's important that you know how to do it on your regular machine as well just like it tells you. Just fall on that first stitch line that I did a quarter of an inch away. You have your front and your back pieces. You have your front and your back piece pieces, pretty sides touching. Okay, in case you do have this with a print. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get one of um, we're going to get our sleeves. Okay, I want to set this aside for just a second. We're going to grab our sleeves. So for our sleeves, it's telling us to put pretty sides touching, and we're going to do a double seam again. So pretty sides touching. So you can tell this is the pretty side. This is not the pretty side. This is the pretty side. So pretty side's touching. You want to line up these side notches. Side notches, pin, and there you go. Because this is a short seam, I'm not pinning at the top, the beginning and the end of that seam. It's a pretty short seam, so that's okay. So we're making these jammies so that when we go to Florida for Christmas, he has some nice jammies because the other ones are a little high water on him. Um, he's grown a little bit in the last couple of months. So, let's go ahead and do it again. So, go. Up. Remember, start off just a little bit from that beginning so it doesn't catch underneath the, in that, um, the feet dogs. little bit of a curve so just kind of go with that curve so for these manual machines that are not computerized it's important that you bring your needle back up to the highest position so that it doesn't do that crunching sound you're like oh my goodness what happened 
I, I do that. <laughs> I forget sometimes I have to take baths. Sometimes I'm just like, I need to slow down. Okay. important with those old like stingers and stuff like that the old ma manual machines that are just like this one actually let me come back over here so you can see me i was like i'm all over there um even that's why it's important to you have your needle come back up because a lot of people are like my machine's not working some people will say their machine's not working properly it's not the tension's not right or it's not thread right it's because they don't bring the foot the needle back up to the highest position okay so once you've done that, then it says you can go ahead and cut that back. I am going to serge these, so I'm not gonna do cutting back because I'm gonna serge it. My son has this thing about me making his clothes and if it's not serged, it's not good. Okay, so now it's telling us to do our bottom of our sleeves to so go ahead and hem our bottom of our sleeves. Let me see, turn up sleeve hem, base clothes on the fold and turn in a quarter of an inch. Uh, on the raw edge. It says base the um, base and closed and then press it. But first I want to go ahead and go to the serger and serge this. Now if you do not have a serger, like I said, you can use your over uh, overcast foot. You would have to change over to a zigzag stitch so that makes sure it doesn't hit this metal piece in the middle. Okay, and then make your, your stitch length as small, maybe two, one and a half, so that it's closer together. So it really has that motion of almost looking like a, um, like a serger. Okay, so I'm going to do one with the serger. I'm going to do one like this, and I'm going to show you what it looks like, the difference. Okay, so I'm going to cut this one back because obviously I won't be cutting it back on my machine. My serger cuts it back for me but this machine doesn't. <laughs> so for me, I'm just gonna take my little toggle back there, take my foot out, replace it with a new one. It's my overcast foot. Get to a number three, which is a zigzag stitch for me, and I'm gonna go down to about one and a half stitch length, just like I said. So when you use this, like I said, just like you did before, you're gonna start a little bit off the seam, not in the very beginning of that seam, because it's gonna get sucked up down in there. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you guys a close-up here in just a second. I'm going to go do the overlock on the other one, and then I'm going to show you the difference, and you can compare those two for yourself. So here's how the overlock looks, okay? And then this is the uh, overcast stitch. So it's a little bit different, but it's not too dramatic that you can't use the overlock foot versus your um, serger, okay? So you don't have to go out and buy a serger just because you're making garments. This overlock foot works great. Um, it looks just very similar to it. It has many threads. That's all its difference. Okay? So I've gone ahead and overlocked all of my pieces. I'm going to switch up my foot again. Go back to a number two stitch length. Okay? Now, <clears throat> excuse me. When um, they're talking about basting, um, basting in to close the fold up, okay? They're telling you to go ahead and do a hem. Now, usually a hem is a um, one and a quarter or one inch hem. So they're telling you to turn it up one inch and then turn it under again and then fold it down. So this is what I like to do because it's a quarter of an inch and then an inch. Does that make sense? So on my presser foot, I know that if I go all the way if I move my needle all the way to the left, move my needle all the way to the left, that is a quarter of an inch for me, okay? I'm taking off this attachment so I can put my sleeve in. 
so I don't distort my sleeve, okay? And I'm going to change this to a stitch length of number four, which is a basting stitch, okay? And I'm going to go all the way around. It's like between one and two. I'm going to go all the way around and stitch. take it off and then I'm going to do it again but this time I'm going to do it five eighths of an inch away from that line that I just did okay and that for me is all the way to the left okay there we go and this really the hem of it can be longer or shorter as you need it if you find that this pattern piece is too short for your child, then just do a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch and then that will work as well. Because this is such a light material, it doesn't matter. But if you find that it's too long, then take it up a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like to have those two lines. So I hope you guys can see that on the screen, that it's two lines, okay? First stitch line, a quarter of an inch. The next one is done at an inch, okay? Top line, quarter of an inch, bottom line, inch. So now it's telling you to, to fold it in, press it, and then fold it again so that you, you have your hand. I like to use these as my guides because it makes it easier when you're at the um, ironing board to make sure you turn it over and it's even all the way around because I use the, the side of my fabric for my seam allowance so it kind of helped me make that guide okay so let me go ahead and do that um, to both pieces I'm going to iron it and then I'll be right back okay so now that you've gotten your um, hems of your sleeves gone ahead and turned over and pressed now we're going to do the same thing again now that it's going to be nice and pretty side so I'm going to do the pretty side facing up Okay, and I know for me because I can feel it where I need to kind of put my needle down. Don't forget to change your stitch length to a two and a half. Okay. Now we're going to do a top stitch all the way around. to snip my threads before I get back to them then that oh, the next stitch that I stitch right over it looks a, lot, it looks a lot neater okay so when you turn this inside out or right side out you have a nice hem on your sleeve okay so you do that to both sleeves <clears throat> okay so after you've done that to both sleeves I'm gonna go ahead and run this one through it's telling us to um, do the with right sides together pin the sleeves in the armhole edges baste in and then they'll do a double stitch so sometimes sleeves are a little bit bigger than the hole it's going to go into it's not really the case too much with raglan sleeves so um that's the style of sleeve that this is we don't have to worry too much about that but we'll do it we'll see what happens Okay, so now it's telling us to take our sleeves and put it inside our front and back pieces with pretty sides touching. So leave your um, your your front and back piece with pretty sides touching. Okay, so the seams are on the outside, just like it shows you in the diagram. And then you're going to take this sleeve and put it 
inside, okay? So we're gonna to wanna to match our notches. So this one here has two notches, okay? So this is the back, this is my back because it has two notches, okay? I'm gonna slide that in. I'm going to line up my seam, my underarm sleeve seam, okay? Then I'm gonna pin that notch. And I do that a little backwards because I wanna make sure if anything else goes crazy, that underarm seam is the same and it does and it looks seamless, okay? Then again, pin at the top of the neck hole, okay? And then kind of get everything together and pin your sleeve in, okay? Turn it just a little bit. This is the front, front. Match up your notches. Front to front, back to back. One notch is front, two notches is the back. Okay, so right now we're putting piece, um, pattern piece number three with pattern piece number one and two, which is front and back, and then pattern piece number three is the sleeve. Okay. Pin, pin, pin. Pinning is our friend. Okay. Once you've got that nice and pinned all the way around, do the same thing on the other sleeve. So because this is a raglan sleeve, it's easier to do this and have, um, and go ahead and do your other, seam, your other sleeve. If this was not a raglan sleeve, it's kind of harder to do that when you're working with regular sleeves because of the whole easing and things like that. It's a lot harder to do both sleeves at once or pinning wise because you usually have to use a lot of pins. And I mean like a lot of pins. Like I'm using like four or five right now, which is a lot more from, than I'm usually doing, but um, um, let me see here, hold on. Lost my train of thought here for a second. But with the regular sleeve that you have to ease in, I'm, I'm pinning a lot, lot, lot more. And I know it doesn't say this a lot of times in the directions, but I always recommend pressing your seams after you finish sewing. So as soon as you finish sewing something, press those seams, even when hemming. It makes it nice and crisp. It gives you that extra little bit of quality into your product. Okay, so I've done all that. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way. Now give it, tell me to do my double stitch. It said to baste it in, but there is not, there's nothing to ease in, so I don't really know why I'm basting it in. So I could say with my fabric, I'm not going to baste it. If with your fabric you're seeing that there's a lot of gaps between the front piece and the back and the, and the front of the sleeve, then you may want to do some easing in there and use a basting stitch. But if you don't have that, like I don't have that problem, then go ahead and just do your regular stitch, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do my five eighths and then go back and do my quarter of an inch, just like we did before, okay? Take it a little slow when you go over your, your double seams, when you, the seam of the underarm and the seam of the side seam come together. Just take it a little slower, okay? Now this is very important when you're doing a, um, when you're stitching, when you're sewing with a knit fabric, do not stretch it. When you're sewing it, just sew it together. Don't push, don't pull. 
very important that you not to do that. Okay? <coughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go and do our, our double stitch on both sides. And then um, we'll be right back and I'll show you what it looks like after we've cut it back and uh, overlocked it and pressed it. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and pressed all of our seams and everything. Look how pretty that looks. That's so neat. So it's coming together. So now the next part we have to do is the collar. So here's our collar. So <clears throat> after we put everything in, it's telling us to stitch um, around the neck band. So it says to stay stitch the edge of the top. Okay. So a stay stitch um, is a little different from a basting stitch. It's just something so that we're not stretching it when we're going to do all of our things. So I like to use about a number three and I like to do about a quarter of an inch or so away from the edge of the neck. Okay. the two notches that's the front of the pajama top and then the one without notches is the back of the pajama bottom of the pajama top <coughs> excuse me so what it's telling us to do now is put pretty sides touching together okay then it's telling us to stitch <clears throat> a five eighths of an inch so same same exact seam allowance that we've been doing the whole time it doesn't say we have to do a double stitch, it's just one stitch, okay? At five eighths. Okay? There it is. Five eighths. So now it's telling us, this is now we're at next. Step number eight, okay? It says with wrong sides touching, fold the neckband together and press lightly, press it lightly. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna open this up, okay? And it says with wrong sides touching. So for my fabric, as you can tell, I don't really have a wrong side because it's a solid. So I'm gonna, the wrong side for me is the side with the seam. Right here, there's, there's a seam, but there's no seam allowance. There's no extra fabric. Here's an extra fabric. So that's my wrong side. That's the part I'm going to put together. Okay? So it's telling us to fold it in half and press it lightly. Okay? So you don't have to do too much pressing on this thing. So it has to be crisp or anything. They just want you to put um, fold it in half, pretty much. Okay? Just fold it in half. So that everything kind of meets up together and that's what it looks like okay I'm not pressing mine it's okay it's not like it has to be pressed like something wrong is gonna happen if you don't do it it's just so you make sure it's at the halfway mark and it's even all the way through okay so and it says now it says to pin the neck bands to the neck top matching symbols at the center stitch and then do a double stitch seam um, stretching the neck band to fit and then press the seam toward the top so towards the the top not towards the neckline so back down this way okay so <clears throat> now we're going to stitch this on okay so what i we have our two notches in the front our two notches in the front so go ahead and not match those two up
okay? You're gonna have to stretch it a little bit. That's what it's saying. You're gonna have to stretch this um, band a little bit, okay? This collar, you're gonna have to stretch it a little bit. Because think about it, it's gonna go, it's going to actually go, um, I always do this and I always have to kind of turn it in a little bit. It's gonna, it's what's gonna stretch and go over your kid's head. Okay, so I've got those notched right there, right there, okay, and then the center back with the center back. And this is where those you have to match up those triangles. So there's a triangle on the collar piece and there's a triangle piece on the, um, the top piece as well. So you gotta match those pieces, okay? And then make it stretch, make it fit, okay? Stretch it, make it fit. have to stretch that's pretty good okay so make sure it all fits in it all eases together and pin when you can pin where you can pin where you can okay pin where you can all the way around okay so after you finish pinning then we're going to stitch it down and we're going to leave this open and you're going to take it and I want you to literally Put it in, right, start, put your needle down, and then I want you to stretch just slightly. I want you to kind of, kind of, see, kind of see this sideways a little bit. Okay. Oops. <laughs> nothing broke, nothing broke. Okay, so underneath here, right, it's a little baggy, and then you got to stretch this part. So you got to take it and stretch it just so slightly so that all matches Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a close-up here. <clears throat> so I haven't pinned over here yet, but over here I did pin on the side. You see how this piece here is smaller than this piece? Here, <clears throat> this is what I'm talking about when I say stretch it. So you're gonna grab your back seam and your front seam and you're gonna kinda stretch it. And you see how it stretches? And you grab some of it and then you pin it. Okay, so you grab these pins again, and you kind of go like that, and okay, okay, good. I'm gonna grab it, and I'm gonna pinch it, and I'm gonna hold it, okay? You're doing it just so that both pieces kind of match up together. When you're doing this, you are not stretching the bottom piece. It, may, it looks like you are, but you're not. All you're doing is just laying it flat so that it goes flat against this band piece. The band piece, or the collar, is what we're stretching. See that? Like right here, there's a gap. <clears throat> see there's a gap right there that's how we're gonna stretch when we're going on the sewing machine so I'm gonna start with my back I'm gonna start with my back and go all the way back to my back again so if your child is anything like my child <clears throat> he needs to know what the back of the fabric is so in order to do that what I do is I grab a piece of scrap fabric and I just cut a little square And because it's a knit fabric, it doesn't have to be finished off or anything like that. Okay, I just cut myself a little piece of, I could have done better jobs cutting that, but <clears throat> I'm gonna put, go ahead and insert this right here, okay? So then that way, when this comes up, this is the back. So he knows this is the back. I don't need any fancy labels or anything like that. You can if you want to. I just say use what you got on hand, get good at your at your skill before you stop and go, oh, I need all this and that before I can get started. Don't stop yourself, okay? So because I want this part here, just the bottom part to stretch like this, I'm gonna put this part to the bottom so I can see where I'm going, okay? And we're going again at 5 eighths. So we're doing a double stitch. So we're doing that five eighths and then again at the quarter of an inch. Okay. So I want you guys to see that. I want to make sure you guys can see perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do. Okay. 
is I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I don't have the back stitch because I'm gonna meet my stitch back up. Let me move my pins out of the way so hopefully that doesn't skew the view. And right here, this part here is baggy. This down here is not, so I'm stretching the bottom from pin to pin, stretching. Okay, make sure your needle is down in the fabric before you take any pins out or do any adjustment. Okay, not worried about anything else, just this part right here. Take it and stretch it. Take the pin out. <clears throat> Again, just worried about what's in there. So if you've noticed, most of my gathering, most of the gappy parts are with the fabric, um, with the printed fabric, which are the sleeves. I kind of got off my 5 eighths right there. It's okay, I can go back. If you go under your 5 eighths, you can go back and do your 5 eighths again. So now that I've gone ahead and pressed all my seams in, I'm going to go ahead and do that edge stitch. <clears throat> so the edge stitch, I'm going to do it from this side so I can see the pretty side. I'm going to do it three and a half. Go ahead in. And we're getting like really close to that seam, that collar seam. Okay? We're really close to that collar seam. I'm going to meet back up to it so I'm not worried about having to back stitch. If I do too much back stitching in that one little spot, it just becomes very bulky. And I've already pressed everything down. I just want to make sure everything is that way. Again, it gets kind of bulky right here with these seams, so I just want to make sure that I go over it nice and smooth. just takes practice and by no means am I perfect not even close Remember, clean as you go. It's very important so you don't have a bunch of strings hanging out everywhere. Okay, and there is our top. It's kind of neat, huh? So let me see here. The very last step, which is step 11, is to hem the bottom. So you do the hemming of the bottom the same way you did the hemming of the um, armhole, oh, the arm sleeve, um, the sleeve openings. Um, you could do it the same way. Or you can cheat just a little bit, okay? And what I say is cheat a little bit is that I go through and I go through and I surge mine and then I just fold it up an inch and then top stitch it down. So that's what I'm going to do with this <clears throat> when it comes to um, doing this. And then you've got a final product. So we've got our little tag, a little makeshift tag, see? Um, and our front and our back. And it looks really nice. It looks really cute. Now, remember, the bottom of this is not fray. So I'm going to kind of measure it on my son before I do anything else to it. <clears throat> so now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next part of this, and that is going to be our pants. So pants is going to be next. So we're going to get piece number six and number seven and do a double stitch on the inseam, like that right in here, right in where the leg is, right in here. We're going to get one front piece and one back piece, and then do a double stitch there on both pieces and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Okay, so let me grab my pant pieces and let's get rolling. <clears throat> so we got our pant pieces right here. 
So this piece here, because it has one notch, is the front. And this piece has two notches. I know that this is the back piece. And then this is a front and a back back here too as well. Okay, so we're gonna grab, a, grab them and then we're going to put them together. So there's gonna be one left side, one right side. So just kind of note, okay, this is one notch. This is one notch. Gotta look for the notches here, guys. Two notches, two notches, pretty sides facing me, one notch pretty side facing away from me. You're gonna go ahead and put these together, okay? I'm gonna put them together right here. Line up our notches. Line up those notches just like that. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and pin this all the way down and stitch it with our double stitch. Serge it and do that for both pant pieces. And then I'll come back and tell you what we're gonna do next on the next part. <laughs> 